Dr. Hertzi. Good morning, Chairman Smith and Chairman Crapo and fellow staff workers. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to appear today to present the views of the union on the issue of fluoridation of public water supplies. Our union represents the staff, scientists, lawyers, and others who analyze hazard exposure and economic data and advise management how to use them in public health protection. I'm not here today to speak for EPA, but rather the union, founded 17 years ago to protect EPA workers from unethical pressure by EPA managers. It was on that basis in 1985 that we first got involved in this issue. In 1997, we voted to oppose fluoridation, and our opposition has grown stronger as more adverse data on the practice has come in. In the interest of time, let me state our recommendations first. We ask that you order an independent review of the cancer bioassay of sodium fluoride mandated in 1977 by Congress. Evidence for carcinogenicity in that assay was systematically downgraded by a special executive branch commission appointed and run by the very agencies that Congress did not trust to run the uh, bioassay in the first place. That action saved fluoridation temporarily. We ask that you order chronic toxicity studies on the two waste products that are now used in 90 percent of fluoridation programs. EPA says there are at the present no chronic toxicity data on them, and we ask that you order EPA set an MCL for fluoride that's truly protective of all American citizens, infants and adults alike, because the current one does not, in violation of the Safe Drinking Water Act. We ask that you order epidemiology studies using dental fluorosis as an index of exposure to determine the extent of other toxic effects, especially effects on the brain and bone in the population that are attributable to fluoride. We ask that you convene a, a joint congressional committee to give this issue the full airing that it deserves. It's been 23 years since the last one, and it's high time for a new one. I offer the following in support of these recommendations. The American people, and especially our children, are getting way too much fluoride. Two-thirds of children living in fluoridated communities have dental fluorosis in at least one tooth. Dental fluorosis is the visible manifestation of toxic overexposure to fluoride during their developmental years. The initial findings of the cancer bioassay were for clear evidence of carcinogenicity, and that is consistent with several epidemiology and many mutagenesis studies. The protective pollutant status that fluoride enjoys within EPA and other federal establishments is remarkable, as the charts over here show. EPA stated regarding the chemical used in 90 percent of fluoridated communities that, quote, by recovering flu silicic acid from fertilizer manufacturing, water uh, and air pollution are minimized and water authorities have a low cost of fluoride. In other words, EPA's solution to pollution by this waste product is dilution, as long as it's not dumped into rivers and lakes, but rather directly into drinking water systems. Congressman Calvert of the House Science Committee has letters of inquiry out to EPA and other federal entities on this subject. The 1983 report of a Surgeon General's panel on fluoride to EPA was altered without consultation or notification of the panel members so as to help EPA justify an outrageous set of drinking water standards promulgated in 1986. The results of a 50-year experiment conducted in Kingston and Newburgh, New York show that there's no overall difference in dental caries rates between the two communities, but there's a significantly higher incidence of dental fluorosis in the fluoridated community. Since 1994, there have been six studies that show adverse effects of fluoride on the brain, even at the so-called optimum level of one part per million. The epidemiology studies that we recommend above should make a prime effort to look at brain effects, given the national concern over attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder and autism in our children. Three trial judges since 1978 made findings of fact that water fluoridation poses an unreasonable risk to the American people. Fluoridation proponents like to say that there's no real controversy about fluoridation, and they're right. When these three disinterested trial judges heard weeks of testimony, they came to the same conclusion that our union did about the unreasonable risks involved. The findings of fact remain untouched in those uh, uh, trials today. Recent publications indicate a link between the use of silico fluorides for fluoridation and elevated blood lead levels in children and antisocial behavior. And leading <clears throat> dental researchers are changing their views on the safety and efficacy of fluoridation. Doctors John Calhoun and Hardy Lineback, both former spokespersons for fluoridation, have published recantations of their former position. On behalf of EPA's professional community, I urge the subcommittee to convene a select committee for a national review of water fluoridation. It's high time we do that, and I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hertzi. Uh, Mr. Hertzi, before I yield, Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Hersey, I know you're an employee of the EPA, and I, I'm assuming that your views conflict with the agency on the issue of, uh, of uh, fluoridization. Is that correct? 
Given the fact that EPA has set the maximum contaminant level as indicated on the chart at 4,000 uh, parts per billion and the so-called optimum level is 1,000 parts per billion, one could assume that. Uh, a citizen inquired of uh, uh, Congressman Bob Young uh, to ask EPA about the American Dental Association listing EPA as an endorser of fluoridation. Um, the then Assistant Administrator for Water, Bob Perciuseppi, wrote back to Congressman Young and said that uh, EPA had, had asked ADA to take EPA's name off the lists of endorsers of fluoridation. So it's a wash. EPA, I think, is uh, playing the good federal soldier in supporting this program that's been a federal mandate, uh, more or less, for had, 50 had, years. But uh, officially, it, it's, it's not on the list of endorsers. You, you cited several studies, um, which were very interesting. I saw them in your, in your statement. Um, what, what kind of, um, are, these, are these basically uh, independent studies with no peer review, or have, has there been sufficient peer review uh, to give these, these studies more credibility or not? Now, the ones that are, are of most concern to us are the, the peer-reviewed studies that have appeared in uh, neurotoxicology and teratology and brain research uh, in 1995 through 1998. The work of Phyllis Mullinex, for instance, uh, indicated that when uh, rats were dosed, uh, pregnant uh, dams were dosed with, with fluoride, that would result in serum levels in the brain of the, of the pregnant dams that mimic serum, serum levels in human beings drinking water at that, at that maximum contaminant level. The dams gave birth to pups that were hyperactive, born hyperactive, remained hyperactive throughout their life. That was the, that was the reference in my testimony to asking for a uh, epidemiology study that looked after that particular uh, endpoint. Um, uh, also in that same journal in 1998, a, a group of Chinese workers published the results uh, of some research in which they gave uh, basically the same doses that the Mullinex group did and indicated that there was a depletion of certain critical uh, uh, chemicals in the brain, basically lipids that uh, uh, constitute the uh, neuronal a membrane that, that could explain the, uh, on a mechanistic basis, the outcome of the Mullinex study. Then in brain research in 1998, uh, a group of researchers, which included an EPA scientist, found that at one part per million, uh, sodium fluoride resulted in, in changes in the cerebrovasculature in the test animals and also kidney damage. Mr. Olson, do you, do you share the concerns expressed by Dr. Hersey on fluoride? Well, I don't consider myself an expert on fluoride, but um, we certainly think that, uh, first of all, you should know that we sued over the original fluoride standard um, over 10 years ago, urging that the standard be dropped. We thought a standard of more in the neighborhood of one or below was more appropriate because um, EPA admits that there are dental fluoroses, um, spots that occur on children's teeth when you get up to the four part per million level. Um, and there is a lot of science, as Dr. Herzi suggests, that's come out since then. So I guess our view is that certainly there is definitely a need for a um, careful peer review of, of all these new data. And there are significant concerns that have been raised over the last five years from some of the studies. Uh, we don't have a position right now on what the standard should be, but we think that a careful peer review and an open process to look at that new science is definitely called for.